Pedro Castillo, a teacher and trade union leader, is the new president of Peru. What? Wearing his trademark wide-brimmed straw hat, he's a figure that inspires hope for some Peruvians and fear for others. As a candidate for a Marxist-Leninist party, his rapid rise stirred fears, fanned by fake news that he would upend Peru's free market economy and lead the country into economic collapse, like Venezuela. He denies this. I flatly reject that we will bring models from other countries. We are not Chavistas. We are not communists. We are not extremists. Much less are we terrorists. His right-wing opponent, Keiko Fujimori, alleged fraud and called for votes to be recounted. She suggested that Peru was part of a wider geopolitical struggle between the political left and right. In Bolivia, in Argentina. In Bolivia and Argentina, the left has returned. In Ecuador, an illustrious businessman won the presidential elections, and today Peru is in this battle. <laughs> For some analysts, Castillo's victory, even though by the slimmest of margins, is part of a wider swing to the left in Latin America, in a region mostly dominated by leaders from the political right. But in Peru, the significance is much closer to home. The symbolism of the occasion, Peru's bicentenary of independence, is not lost on Peruvians. The presidential palace behind me will be Pedro Castillo's new home. And the teacher is arguably the first president to come from a rural peasant family in the 200 years since Peru declared independence from Spain. Growing anger at the political elite, rising poverty, and inequality for rural voters fueled Castillo's rapid rise on the political stage. Pedro Castillo is a president as a result largely of the crisis deepened by the pandemic. There was already a political crisis in Peru as a result of the Lava Jato scandal, but the pandemic added to it. Castillo is an expression of that. But Torres does not believe it has to do with the left or the right. We see big mobilizations in other countries intensified by the pandemic. I don't see an ideological issue. What it is, is a strong questioning of the way politics is done. Nonetheless, leftist alternatives could capitalize on the mistakes made, particularly in the handling of the coronavirus in upcoming elections. Colombia's conservatives, led by President Ivan Duque, are under pressure ahead of a 2022 vote. While in Chile, the right under Sebastián Piñera could face defeat in elections this year, just as protests forced the country to rewrite its decades-old constitution. Brazil also faces an election battle next year, with a resurgent left led by former president Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva looking to unseat far-right leader Jair Bolsonaro. Dan Collins, CGTN, Lima.